I've been making YouTube videos for an audience for about a year now. Or maybe it's been two? One of those, I think. So this is as good a time as any to look back and see if I can find any opportunities to suck less. Hopefully you like this kind of video, because if I continue to be as stupid as I am now, this could become a yearly thing. So have you ever looked at my channel and wondered why this? Just why this? What could possess anyone to think that this is a good idea? Well, today, I'm going to answer all these very specific questions I imagine you have by telling the story of how I came to make this channel and all the little decisions I made along the way that seems like a good idea at the time. So originally, my channel was supposed to be about atheism, and yes, I did used to revel in my own suffering. But this shouldn't come as a surprise to you. If you only look at my channel, you can see a lot of influences from the atheist skeptic community in my channel's design. I exclusively do debunk videos instead of producing any unique ideas of my own. I've got an edgy colour scheme, I've got an edgy animal and or cryptid and or skull man, and I've got the tendency to approach the idea of telling someone they're wrong with nothing short of perverse glee. The only thing I'm missing is a suit I stole off Google Images. I was all set to go, but when it came time to actually write scripts, I found myself with nothing to say. I only ever did one video about religion, and I unlisted it pretty quickly. So I turned to something I was actually knowledgeable about. LGBT plus issues. And also abuse survival, unfortunately. And, well, here we are in present day. I think this has turned out reasonably well. But why? Why this specifically? Why the dragon? Why bite? What's with the... Uh Okay, so this isn't actually a dragon. This is a leviathan. Because my name is Levi. It's... It's a... Leviathan. Do you, do you get it? In addition to that, the leviathan is in the Bible, and it sounds pretty badass. So that will make it a perfect choice for my atheism channel. Right? This particular brand of stupidity would undercut every other decision I made. My channel colours are black and red, because they're the colours of the Atheist logo, and isn't that cool? But even though my channel colour is red, I underline stuff in green for some reason. What's up with that? Well, you see, I have friends who are red-green colourblind, and red and black kind of look the same to them, so I had my snipping tool set to green for them, and I decided to keep it that way, because that would make my visual aids more colorblind friendly. Because that's definitely how colorblindness works. The lack of cohesion is fine, it just means my brand will be stronger. My channel name is Bite, because sea monsters have big, pointy teeth that they can bite things with. Okay, that's a lie. My channel name is actually Bite, because it was named after the Bite model for detecting cults, but I had you going for a second, don't lie to me. As much as I've grown to dislike the name, I do have to admit that its one strong point is that it's very easy to find, because there's nothing out there with a similar name. I decided to introduce this pony character because, um, reasons. Okay, there was actually a specific reason for this. Basically, one night when I was bored, I happened to make a pony Sona, and I decided to adapt that into a character whose one limitation was that he never got angry, and the idea was to use him to curtail my anger, which was getting out of hand at the time. But then my anger kind of resolved itself, and I also promptly forgot what little characterization I'd come up with for this character. So now I'm just left with a bronze horse with a dopey mouth and these smug little eyes and teeth. <sighs> I don't even watch MLP. Why did I think this would be a good idea? Yeah, I think the takeaway from this is that I had no idea what I was doing, and while it's fun to laugh at my silly branding decisions, it's not just my approach to branding that's been bad. My approach to making the videos themselves has been pretty lacklustre. When I first started, I focused 95% of my time and energy on the scripting. As far as I was concerned, the scripting was the only thing that mattered. I'd spend anywhere between 48 and 100 hours on writing and proofreading my script, only to get the recording and editing done in just 6 hours or so often in one sitting. 
I'd zone out during recordings and mechanically read off my lines. I'd keep going even when I'd exhausted my voice and become thoroughly congested. As long as it was intelligible, it was sufficient for me. But then, at the same time, I didn't want to spread recording over multiple days or sessions in case my voice sounded different. Apparently, according to 19 and 20 year old me, poor quality is only acceptable for certain specific things. But worse, I'd also spend a dozen hours or more per script just reading through to think of anything that nitpicky assholes could misinterpret or deliberately twist. Part of the reason my videos have been taking so long to come out is because I've been spending as much as an extra week trying to reactionary proof my content. But even worse than that, I went into every video with the philosophy that if they weren't long, that meant I didn't understand the topic enough to have anything valuable to say. This was a philosophy I'd go on to disprove with not one, but two double features. Essentially, I'd put two 10 minute responses together into one video for no fucking reason. Another issue that's been plaguing me is scheduling. From day one of having an audience, I've been open about the fact that I suffer from chronic depression that can put me out of commission for days or weeks without warning or reason. Yet I still keep giving people estimated release dates for my videos that I constantly fail to meet. I also never established a way of updating people on my progress, so when I've, for example, for completely hypothetical example, been working on a particularly large project about a certain controversy in a certain online community that rhymes with schmatheist, and that project has been subject to several delays, I've had no way of easily letting people know about that. It's just been radio silence, sometimes for months. My response to comments has also been terrible. It's just been the absolute worst. I decided on one hand that I wanted a heavily moderated comment section free of transphobia and other bigotries, but also an unrestricted comment section where every comment gets posted immediately. These two things don't go well together. I also had a habit of forcing people to engage by threatening to ban them, and... Oh god. Okay, don't get me wrong. Fuck those people. They were all dishonest trolls and I have no sympathy for them. It's just, that system looked so bad, I even put people on deadlines. On one hand, it worked. It worked really well, but it was not good from an optics perspective. And it didn't even accomplish anything. Like I said, these people were dishonest trolls. Forcing them to engage wasn't doing anything, except feeding into my selfish desire to argue with people and prove them wrong. Everything about my approach to comments was putting my love of arguing above what was actually good for all of you. It was just so fucking disgusting. There are also some small things I could have very easily been doing this whole time to improve accessibility and just generally make things better that I haven't been doing. Like, I go to the trouble of writing an entire script word for word, but I don't publish transcripts of my videos. What's up with that? I had the opportunity to make things better for people with virtually no extra work, and I didn't do it. And I put trigger warnings in my descriptions and write my descriptions in such a way that some of the trigger warning will show so I can get the attention of people who don't read the description when I could just put the trigger warnings at the beginning of the video. Again, why? Why haven't I been doing this? Anyway, as you can tell from the title, I'm rebranding, so I guess I'll explain that. Nailed that transition. Basically, I tried out my childish dreams of making an edgy, big boy galaxy brain channel, and I've watched it fail spectacularly at every turn. It was fun. It has been genuinely fun, but I don't like it anymore. This isn't what I want to be. I still like the content I do, debunking reactionaries and calling out lies and abusers and doing whatever else I can to help my community will never get old, but... Doing it as a draconian, edgy dragon boy called Bite is genuinely starting to get to me. And it's as simple as that. A new name, some new channel art, and a few little upgrades. 
and I'll also make that cover to Twitter once I find a name that actually comes up when you search for it. So yeah, basically think of this as a soft reboot. When the next video comes out, everything will look completely different and this channel will have a different name, so make sure you either subscribe or bookmark the main channel page if you want to keep watching my videos. I'll also put formally byte somewhere in my channel description both for posterity and so you'll know you've got the right one.